Can you talk a little about... No, look, no. <laughs> How you doing? My name's Jeff Park, this is Uncle Hankins. Sometimes these are nights the same as never in the last 10 years, in terms of what I've learned, I mean, there's been, it's been the biggest learning curve I could possibly imagine going from being, you know, a, a guy working in a record store and dreaming of becoming a professional musician to then it actually happening. I think one of the biggest things was, was that reliance on myself and becoming more confident um, as a young man and then a man to believe in my output and to believe in my decisions along the way um, was a really was a big thing and you know you have to have a pretty crazy level of self-belief to try and pursue music um, and at times that's confronting as well because you you know if you have a crazy level of self-belief in one particular thing that you're doing uh, I think a lot of artists will tell you, you often have the opposite response in the rest of your life a lot of self-doubt and anxiety and stuff like that so dealing with all that kind of stuff has been the biggest process of learning for me um, as a musician as a, as a person and in music I mean the learning just keeps going every day because it's the, the industry itself is changing like crazy every day you know I've gone from you know no social media at all to then MySpace being this big important thing um, and then moving through to Facebook and moving through to you know Twitter and Instagram and all these things and just having to have a constant level of output um, was something that was not at all on my radar when I started it's fucking MySpace man it's a revolution. It's a, it's a digital revolution. It's on something called the, the World Wide Web, which I'd never heard of before this tour either. If you can imagine being able to ring anybody at any time and find out anything, um, that's kind of what the internet's like, but, but it's on a computer. MySpace is apparently the most important tool in rock and roll. It's just an information network, really. It's information dissemination. Dissemination for the nation includes a little bit of masturbation for some for some uh, somebody into the creation of um, of uh, <laughs> I'm out so when I first started a band when I first joined a band I should say I was, I was 12 years old and we started playing what everybody starts playing which is you know Credence Clearwater Revival songs all the way through my teenage years and then actually up until I was about 23 I was in a punk band called An Empty Flight. I just think that sense of angst and anger, I mean <laughs> for better or worse I was just an angsty teen, over, over emotional, over, over sensitive. Obviously I've got a handle on that now. Or every, maybe every young person feels that sense of um, waiting for their real life to begin and feeling frustrated and angsty that they didn't have more um, control of their own life and that was something for me that was a big thing you know uh, I was just waiting for high school to finish so I could get on with my real life and even at that point I thought that my real life was going to be being a, a musician being a professional musician I thought it would be in this punk band that I was in um, and of course it took another almost 10 years of being out of high school before I was able to make music my career The very first gig I ever played as a solo artist was at the Cat and Fiddle Hotel in Balmain. And I had recorded all my first demos for when I was still called, uh, actually at that point I was called The Million. Um, so I'd, I'd been in my band in Empty Flight and it was starting to disintegrate. And at that time I decided to record some solo demos upstairs at this small um, studio upstairs at the Cat and Fiddle where we recorded a lot of an Empty Flight stuff and just these couple of rooms up, up on top of the pub. And one day after I'd finished recording, um, Nathan, the guy that was recording me, said, oh, they've just had a guy pull out to open for this band tonight. Do you want to do it solo? And I was like, okay, I've never done it before, but I had these you know, five or six songs that I'd been performing solo um, whilst I was doing the recording. So I went downstairs and I did it. And I, you know, there was only about 
13 people there, but they all, I just, just got an immediately good response from them. Um, you know, I felt like people just kind of got it more and were able to relate to it more. Um, and that was the first one. And, you know, from there, I've really enjoyed that. I think that's one of the things I love about playing solo, particularly is that engagement with the crowd. It's, it's more, it's more intimate. And I feel like you're having a conversation rather than, you know, when I was in the punk band, it was always more like a, a monologue, you know, an angry monologue. <laughs> but um, playing solo from that day forth was more like a conversation with the crowd.